Proper evidence packaging is critical for the preservation of evidence integrity. In the journey from collection to analysis and finally to testimony, packaging is an important step to ensure that the results we get here in the lab are valid and that the evidence you seized is the evidence we analyzed. This video will cover the following topics. Selecting the best items for analysis. Correctly describing these items on the Form 49. Correctly securing the evidence. Choosing appropriate packaging. Packaging plant material. And safely packaging suspected fentanyl. Selecting the correct evidence for analysis. Correctly describing it on the Form 49. When comparing the Form 49 to the evidence, it can oftentimes be confusing. How to select the best items for laboratory submission. First, examine your evidence and separate the items you'd like tested for controlled substances. Second, remove trash, miscellaneous items, paraphernalia, and other items of non-probative value. If we have to do it, it takes time to sort through and document the unnecessary items. There might be risks of cross-contamination, and ultimately it adds confusion to the report and during testimony. Now it's time to ensure that these items are described accurately on the Form 49. This is important as it lets the analyst know that nothing is missing. Describe what you see, not what you suspect. Drugs becomes brown substance in a plastic bag and pills is better described as two white round pills in a plastic bag. Securing the evidence to ensure nothing spills inside the packaging. Taking the appropriate steps to properly package evidence is critical for evidence integrity. It prevents spillage, cross-contamination, evidence degradation and or loss, and it ensures that the analyst is able to record the most accurate net weight. Please press seal all Ziploc bags, whether they are evidentiary or agency packaging. Please ensure packaging is uncompromised. If there is a hole or a leak, please secure it inside an additional layer of packaging and make sure this layer is sealed prior to submission. All seals should be double-checked before submission to ensure integrity. Don't assume anything. Selecting appropriately sized packaging. Selecting the appropriately sized packaging can be a critical step in submitting drug evidence to the lab. If the packaging is too big, it can be difficult to store and in cases of open evidence can greatly affect the weight by creating a static spread through the bag. If it is too small we struggle with repackaging and in extreme cases might need to return the evidence in our own bag potentially creating confusion if the evidence ends up in court. To reiterate, the evidence packaging used should be large enough to allow for repackaging after analysis and small enough so that the evidence is easily located. As with Goldilocks and the Bears, finding the correct size packaging might not be easy. However, if you do have a choice from us, it is greatly appreciated when you find packaging that is neither too big nor too small, but just right. Packaging plant material in paper, not plastic. Due to the organic nature of plant material submissions, moisture and mold can cause degradation. Wet and moldy plant material can break down to the point where active ingredients are no longer present or able to be detected by the lab. It is imperative that plant material be packaged dry in paper bags to limit degradation and loss. Plant material submissions include mushrooms, peyote, and other biological samples, including samples for marijuana cannabis determination. You should also check the seals on external agency packaging. Ensure the entire seal is secured. This prevents loss of evidence and shows the evidence has not been tampered with. Don't forget to include your initials and date over the seal. Suspected fentanyl needs to be packaged in plastic, double-bagged, and clearly marked as suspected fentanyl on both the Form 49 and the evidence. 
If you have reason to believe the item you are submitting contains fentanyl, extra precautions should be taken. Items must be double bagged and in plastic so we can visually confirm the evidence. Please note, your agency will have approved PPE and fentanyl handling instructions. Please adhere to these when submitting evidence of this suspected nature to the lab. Agency packaging should include a warning label so the analyst knows to take extra precautions. Finally, please mark the Form 49 to ensure we are aware of the possible dangers. In summary, select only items that need analysis. Correctly describe the evidence on the Form 49. Secure evidence to avoid spillage. Select appropriately sized packaging, package plant material in paper, and package suspected fentanyl in plastic, double bagged, and clearly marked. Remember, we all work under the assumption that any submitted evidence may end up center stage in a courtroom. Any one of us, from police officers to evidence technicians to analysts, may be asked to testify as to the integrity of the evidence submitted. Additionally, proper evidence packaging allows for efficient analysis. It also keeps everyone safe. Thank you for doing your part, and don't hesitate to contact your local laboratory if you have any questions.